Hello again, everybody. We're going to talk here about hypoglycemia. This is going to be fairly straightforward. Uh, the way that the USMLE likes to test this um, is fairly easy. So there's just really a few things that you need to know. Uh, but for clinical practice, there's a little bit more information. It just tends to, for some reason, rarely be tested um, on exams. So we're going to primarily stick to what gets tested. Uh, but I will give you a little bit of information for, uh, for, for your own uh, edification, if you will. If you haven't had a chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the I button in the upper right-hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And certainly feel free to subscribe to my channel and you'll get updates as I put more and more videos up, which I try to do a few times a week at least. Okay, so hypoglycemia, very simple, low glucose level. Generally here, we're talking below 70 milligrams per deciliter. Your body has a really good way of regulating glucose, it is pretty tightly regulated. And so even if you're going on a fast, you should not be going below 70 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, because your body is capable of gluconeogenesis. Now, there are some heritable conditions that uh, you will go below 70 if you fast, um, but these are rare, and they are rarely tested on step two and three. Step one, if you're taking it, go look up von Gierke's disease. Okay, so the normal level is between 70 and 120, fasting, and symptoms usually appear when the blood glucose drops below 50, but there's really no direct correlation between symptoms and glucose levels, so you can't really rely on that. The symptoms of hypoglycemia are attributed to sympathetic activation. What's going to happen is you become hypoglycemic and your adrenal glands go into overdrive, and one of those things that your adrenal gland makes is epinephrine. So you can expect things like sweating, tremor, tachycardia, palpitations, anxiety, nausea, and vomiting. Certainly there's going to be a uh, increased appetite. A, uh, these people become ravenous. Uh, and that makes sense. Your body's responding to low nutrient level. Uh, they can also have blurred vision and altered mental status. Uh, so what do we look for in the history of someone with glyco uh, hypoglycemia? We look for uh, medications that they may be on. So antihyperglycemics, particularly sulfonylureas, uh, can really do uh, some hypoglycemia in patients with diabetes. So you need to look for that. Uh, bariatric surgery can increase the risk as well as we're going to see. Now, if you have a patient with altered mental status, the very first thing you're always going to do, whether you suspect hypoglycemia or not, is of course to stabilize the patient, but then while you're doing so, you also need to get a finger stick glucose. If a patient is hypoglycemic, getting that finger stick glucose, super cheap, you can easily address the hypoglycemia by giving dextrose. So it's something you wanna know right away. It's very easy, it doesn't take long. The treatment for hypoglycemia is obviously going to be to replace the glucose. This can be done orally if the patient is alert and aware and able to. Uh, sugar absorbs pretty quickly. Uh, otherwise, you can also do a D50. And then you wanna treat the underlying cause. So there are a number of causes of hypoglycemia. I have them up here. However, the exam likes to bring in uh, the labs. So what labs do you wanna get? Uh, you wanna get a finger stick glucose, obviously. We wanna look for signs of an infection. Infections can cause hypoglycemia. So you wanna get a CBC. We're gonna get a BMP as well. Uh, we'll get thyroid function tests because hypothyroidism can cause hypoglycemia. We're gonna get an insulin level. Some of these patients may be taking insulin. They may have taken too much if they're they're diabetic, or they may be taking insulin that doesn't belong to them. We'll come to that. You want to get a C-peptide level for reasons we'll go into. Liver function test is useful. Sometimes this, uh, this can be associated with liver failure. Remember, the liver is responsible for a lot of gluconeogenesis, and then a tox screen, including urine sulfonylureas. Now, this is often how it's shown to you. You'll get a patient with hypoglycemia, and then you'll have these three choices that show up, maybe a couple other ones, but these are the big three. So insulinoma, meaning a tumor in the pancreas that secretes insulin. Exogenous insulin, meaning they're either taking insulin that doesn't belong to them, or they are taking insulin that is prescribed to them, but they took too much. And then sulfonylureas. Uh, so remember that when we make our own insulin, we first make pre-pro-insulin, then, then it turns to pro-insulin, and then finally it gets cleaved to insulin 
along with C-peptide. Now, if you are taking insulin, like subcutaneous insulin, you will not have that C-peptide. That C-peptide does not exist on synthetic insulin, only the insulin you make. So if you have a patient with exogenous insulin, certainly their plasma insulin will be high. However, their C-peptide will be either normal or low. Why low? Because you're not going to be making your own insulin since you already have some negative feedback. Um, so the C-peptide and the pro-insulin will be normal or low. And of course, the urine sulfonylurea will be nil because that's not the cause. If they are taking sulfonylureas, remember how sulfonylureas work. They encourage the release of insulin, your own insulin. So you will have a high plasma insulin and you will have a high C-peptide because it's your own insulin that's being released. Pro-insulin will be normal and urine sulfonylureas obviously is going to be present because that's what's causing it. Insulinoma, you can probably piece this together. You're going to have a high plasma insulin and a high C-peptide. Remember, again, this is your insulin, so you will have C-peptide. You'll have a high pro-insulin and then you'll have a uh, no sulfonylureas. So uh, this is these are the three that are commonly tested, and it's worth your time figuring out how this happens from a biochemical perspective because it'll make it a lot easier to read these charts and understand what's going on and why, as opposed to just memorizing it cold. These are some of the causes of hypoglycemia, obviously diabetic related. I would say that's probably the number one cause. Patients took too much insulin, too much of the hypoglycemic. Uh, perhaps they exercised and took the same amount of insulin, which will certainly cause hypoglycemia. If they are doing intense exercise, they need to reduce their insulin dosage. Uh, you can get postprandial or reactive hypoglycemia. Think of things like dumping syndrome or uh, galactosemia, which is inherited. Infections, as mentioned, liver function tests, look for those elevated LFTs. Hypothyroidism, ethanol-induced hypoglycemia. This is kind of a, a diagnosis of exclusion, but look for that positive alcohol. That's why we get the urine tox screen. Factitious hyperinsulinism, generally in the context of Munchausen syndrome. Uh, these patients will have a high insulin and low C-peptide. And insulinoma, which is very, very, very rare. Uh, we're talking one in, I don't know, 500,000 or so. Um, so again, you'll have a high insulin, high C-peptide, and pro-insulin because your body is just making a lot of insulin due to that tumor. Treatment is just to replace glucose. Make sure you get up above 70, you're going to have to monitor these patients because they may go hypoglycemic again. Uh, the patient can be discharged when an underlying cause is found, and these are the treatments for the various underlying causes. If it's diabetic related, they need education, change their dose if necessary, dumping syndrome, usually bariatric patients, small and more frequent meals throughout the day, infection, treat that, ethanol induced. Uh, make sure that when you're giving your D50 that you are also supplementing with thiamine and folic acid because you don't want to uh, harm the patient. Insulinoma, you want to image, give octreotide, and factitious hypoglycemia. These are patients that are taking insulin that doesn't belong to them. They need a psychiatry referral and likely behavioral therapy.